Hello everyone, thank you for being my subscriber. As you know, this is a channel that aims to spread the education of fascia, foot health, and holistic health. And the unique work I have on hyperarch fascia training, which is reverse engineer from elite athletes. In this video, I want to show you what it is like to be a pioneer in this type of work. So I came across a post by a coach online which kind of belittled people's real concerns about weightlifting. He used a top talent, Mattis Basulis, and took a clip of interview saying he did not, he did a lot of polymetrics and strength work, which helped him to become more bouncy. And then the coach used some concerns from athletes. I'm assuming the ones he tried to work with and their potential objection. When I read them, as you can see here, it is clearly belittling and being ignorant of the real concerns. So the first one is coach, I lift, I can't lift because it will ruin my game. Second one, coach, I can't lift in season because it will make me feel sore and slow. Coach, my sport coach told me and said not to lift too heavy and just lift lighter weight for more reps. So the list of excuses for not lifting is in the sports of basketball and goes on and on. That's what he's saying, right? Again, not real concerns or experience by athletes who are doing it. He labels them as excuses. Look at how many people like this type of messaging. And I'm only the one out of 27 comments, uh, 23 comments that talk about the real concerns. So I said, that's not excuses. Lifting weights only works for some athletes to improve vertical jump per several studies. They are individualized differences that require more than just weightlifting. I think I said this in a very civil manner, not trying to say lifting weights are not effective. It's just that they are individualized. They're individualized because of anatomical differences to weightlifting and also fascia differences. And uh, comment below if you think this is uncivil. Now, these are legitimate concerns because number one, I have experienced them myself when I was doing weightlifting and weight training. And number two, I have seen real problems with some people who have suboptimal myofascial connection, how their body start to break down from heavy weightlifting or adding weight on top of dysfunction. So we're not even going to include the EDS or hypermobility people. So you know what I'm talking about if you have it. Number three, there are plenty of research highlighting the decrease of performance from DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness, which is one of the biggest challenges or issue with weightlifting right now. The legitimate question we should ask ourselves is why are we sore? Why do we see in some individuals decrease in performance? I repeat, this differs from individuals, right? We don't want to be like our copycats who say weightlifting is bad because of lack of understanding. It depends on the individual myofascial connection. When scientists look at the tissue from a biopsy study after domes occur, it revealed structural changes and damages of Z-disc and disruption of myofibers in the ECM. This is the Stolberg research from 1990. Let's take a look at another research from PubMed. According to the research, domes can affect athletic performance by causing a reduction in joint range of motion, shock attenuation and peak torque, alteration in muscle sequencing, and recruitment patterns may also occur, causing uncustomed, uncustomed stress to be placed on muscle ligaments and tendon. These compensatory, which is a word I use a lot in my line of work with people with fascial issues, these compensatory mechanisms may increase the risk of further injury if a premature return to sports is attempted. According to another research on acute effect of back squat on vertical jump performance in men and women, it says correlations between normalized 1RM back squat load and the absolute change in jump height were small to moderate for both men and women, with most correlations being negative large variation in response to back squat were noted in both men and women. The use of resistant exercise performed prior to a series of vertical jumps can result in improvement in performance in certain individuals, not all, although the gains can be small and depend upon the biomechanics.
any variable measure. So after he read my comment, for some reason he was triggered, and this is what he's replied. Saying that weight training isn't optimal for athletic improvement and just genetics and facial training. No, we do not do facial training, okay? Uh, again, this is being very ignorant of exactly what we do. You do not care about spelling. Facial training is the way, is a really poor heel to have to die on. I guess it's okay when all you do is repost other people's content and don't really actually train, uh, don't actually train anyone yourself. Again, we're going to show him what is actually my page. If you look at my page here, Secret of Athleticism, you will see in the past nine or 10 content that I created is all original about hyperarch fascia training and fascia. There is only one content that I shared because I want to talk about the Filipinos, basketball players, and their barefoot habit while developing their athletics. If you haven't looked at this content, I want you to take a look. I also had a uh, my take, my understanding of the fascia development after the video was done. So it's a creative content by me, not other people's content. So I don't know what the fuck this guy is talking about. And then he says, I don't actually train anyone. And I want you to take a look at all the people that I have worked with. UFC champion, world champion in decathlon, and also various individuals in the professionals and various people like yourself. So let's read some more because our friend here claims that he read, so I want to show you that I read as well. Research has shown that performing maximal or near maximal muscular contraction can produce short-term increases in the maximum force produced by the activated muscles in a phenomenon known as post-activation potentiation, or PAP. The PAP effect has significant implications for strength and conditioning practitioners, okay? Now underneath it says, despite the appeal of the PAP effect for strength and conditioning practitioners, the exempt research has tended to reveal inconsistent findings, inconsistent findings, okay? For example, maximum voluntary isometric contractions have been shown to improve subsequent multi-joint explosive movements in some studies, yet not others. Again, differences, individualized differences. Similarly, heavy back squats have been reported to improve subsequent vertical jump performance in some studies, yet a significant improvement has been absent in all other studies. Again, it depends on the person. As such, the practical application of PAP method has recently been questioned. To summarize my point, weightlifting will create domes and to domes delayed onset muscle soreness is detrimental to performance. So the excuses he mentioned are not excuses. They are legitimate concerns varied by research. Number two, there is individualized differences, how people's body respond differently to the same type of weightlifting training. Again, individualized differences. And that's why we have the hyper arc fascia training work. So there you are. There are enough evidence for me and hopefully for you guys to see that lifting does not always produce consistent results and it really depends on the individual. Therefore, my quote unquote uncivil comment of acknowledging real concerns and legitimate opinions from the training and athletic community is justified. And what got out of control is when he said this. He says, coming at me, someone who's trained athletes for six years, 
and has trained humans, caption, cap, uh, capital letters, for 10 years. Uh, I don't know. You might be training dogs. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Uh, I know you're training humans, but I don't think you understand everything. Well, having your mention turned off is a wild idea. I can do whatever I like. If I don't want to be mentioned, I won't be only mentioned by my followers. That's what I want. I am not only educated, well-read, but I actually train people. Actually. Okay, again, I know you train people, but from what you tell me, you do not sound like an intelligent person. Therefore, I made my comment. Unlike you, continues to just comment and say people are uneducated, but yet has no content of his work actually training people. Again, I want you to take a look at all the people that I have worked with and the result that we have been getting. Again, you are not reading. I don't know where you are reading, so obviously there is a different type of reading that you need to do. It's always the smart researchy type. So apparently I'm the smart researchy type that don't actually train anyone that have the most to say on training athlete. Uh, excuse me, we do have a lot of real results on the clinical side. So yes, I'm the smart researchy type, but I actually train people. But because you don't read and we don't, you don't click, you don't want to see the things that you want to see, doesn't mean that we don't train people. Instead of just posting or reposting other people's content and just commenting about how uneducated people are, well, you, I did not say you were uneducated to begin with. I simply pointed out there are individualized differences. And you guys attack me. Just go out and train someone for once. Again, <laughs> we do train people. We have two world champions. Thank you very much. And those shit exercises on your page that you call fascia exercise that help with athleticism are a joke. Well, if they're a joke, how did we become champions? How did we get results and help so many people who have been experiencing chronic pain and chronic compensation issues? You tell me. So at one point, I realized he works in a gym in Wayne, New Jersey. Guess what? One of my colleagues, Bill Parisi, is also well-versed in the fascial education. So I told him, perhaps you want to speak to Bill and get some idea about the importance of fascia. He then responded with, go talk to Joe DeFranco and learn about strength training. Then I'm like, hmm, wait a minute. Doesn't Joe follow me? The Joe who follows my work? So I searched Joe's IG and I realized, yes, Joe DeFranco does follow my work. So I sent him a message. I will keep everyone up to date on what Joe thinks of fascia and my work of hyperarch fascia training. If you go to that post, I hopefully still there. There are many comments supporting his position that weight training always work. It always work. But again, these people are not educated in training people. These are comments from average people. They don't have the experience nor have done enough reading of published papers or studies on fascia, human anatomy, performance, or health. I repeat, I do not claim that I know everything about the human body or weightlifting. However, I do think by learning and understanding the 22 kilo worth of material that was selectively and purposely removed during dissection will help us. As a community, as a species, to live better lives and be happier and achieve independence and freedom. I hope you can support our mission and educate the mainstream about fascia and how hyperarch fascia training is leading the way. If you like to join our mission, please question the mainstream like we do. All of them, please, using, quote, natural or lifted weights.